while we're opening in prayer, I want everybody to do that. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to share you, not me, you. May these words be from your spirit, not from me. Thank you for the ability and the time to be your servant. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, let's read this. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. It's a beautiful scripture, and it's repeated in a lot of different ways. Brody repeated something along this lines. Manda found lots of scripture that talks about not leaning on your own understanding. Who here's raised kids? And you're like, why do they do that? Why are they doing what they do? I've taught them. I've raised them. They know better. Their buddy tells them something. And it's the gospel. And they'll come home and go, hey, do you know my buddy's dad said if you do blah, blah, blah. You're like, I've been telling you that for 17 years. Yeah. <laughs> Picture God sitting up to the throne room. You've been a Christian for 47 years. I've been telling you for 47 years. Don't do that. Or do this. Lean on me. And you haven't got that yet? It doesn't matter if you've been a Christian for five minutes or 50 years. We all have a problem with our own understanding. So we're going to break that down just a little bit. We're going to ponder <coughs> that, just like this gentleman. Um, we're going to talk about understanding, answers, ignorance, knowledge. Now, when we come to the word ignorance, now, nobody point anybody out. Right direction, wrong direction. And it all comes up to understanding. You're driving down the freeway. I understand 405 goes off here, then it does this, and then it does this. And on the other side of Seattle, it does this again. And until you get to that exit, your understanding was incorrect. Because there's two lanes. If you're in the wrong lane, you're going downtown whateverville. But you just don't want to be. Right? It's the same way with life. You understand that if you do this, 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 and this, you will have wealth, health, prosperity. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't say all that without laughing. Well, the experts say that if I do this or that. Right? Mm -hmm. And then life, <coughs> curveball. And Brody, he's out. The good thing he didn't see that because he had pointed out, Greg, you can't throw a curveball like this. <laughs> he's a resident baseball aficionado. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you can it really good. <laughs> like, I don't understand women's softball. How them ladies can throw that ball underhand, the velocity of the space shuttle, and not throw their arm out <laughs> every time. I don't get it. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, here's your understanding. We are not tough enough to be women. Okay? Put it right there. But when it comes to the, that scripture we just read in Proverbs, let's, let's break that down just a little bit. Go ahead. You can tell him all about it later. I'm going to read it again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit. I used to have word. Submit to him. And he will make your path straight. So we're going to break that down. You notice in, in that scripture, there's four yours in that. Yours, right? And then there's three references to the Lord. Okay? Now, there's no big play on numbers. I know a lot of people get weird on numbers in the Bible. No. But what I'm trying to get to you is he's saying your understanding. We need to take this personally. We need to take this individually. It's ours. Not somebody else's. Right? If you go to church and say, well, 
I believe this because that's what they believe. No, don't do that. Well, the pastor says this. Guys, I'm not going to be standing beside you when the Lamb's Book of Life is opened. And so that you can look at me and go, you told me that. <laughs> don't blame me, folks. The textbook's right here. Basic instruction before leaving earth. Bible. Bible. <coughs> This is where to get our understanding. This is where we're to get the very word of God. The very essence of Jesus Christ is found here. Not in a pulpit. Maybe breaking some you know, ideas there. But that's true. It's not on the man or the woman. It's on the Lord. Amen? So, let's look at the word trust. We use that word very loosely, the same way we do. We use the word love. We use the word love to say, I love spaghetti, the same way I say, I love my mom. I love the Lord, the same way I love cookies. And true, I love the Lord more than cookies. Guys, I just... <laughs> Some of you may be doubting this. I do love the Lord more than cookies. And if we had a Sunday without cookies, I would come back. All right, let me know. But trust, do we trust? In that scripture it says, trust in the Lord. And to trust, I went right to the, to the dictionary. Yeah, I know how to do that. It says, reliance on the integrity, strength, ability, surety, etc. of a person or thing. <clears throat> to have confidence. Confident expectation of something. And then I went, hold. And I went, yes, there it is. When we trust in the Lord, we're putting our hope in Him, our faith in Him. That's what we're doing. We're going to put, we're going to hope in the Lord. We're going to uh, have faith in the Lord. And then it says, with all your heart. Not the person sitting next to you's heart. Not the person that told you the scripture's heart. But your heart. Do you have confidence and faith in the Lord God, Jesus Christ? I can't answer that for you. The person sitting next to you can't answer that for you. Do you have faith, confidence, and hope in Jesus Christ? And the promises that he's made to you. Whomsoever believeth in me shall have everlasting life. Do you believe that? Then you can put your trust and your hope and your faith in the Lord. And lean not on your own understanding. we got to break down the word lean. That just doesn't mean one leg shorter than the other one. It might, but... Right? But when you lean on someone or something... Remember my, my explanation of what faith is? The chair reference, right? We just set a chair down there, we just throw up 240 pounds into it, and expect it to hold us up. Right? We don't look at it and turn it over, read the manufacturer recommendation, call it Google, you know... Is this chair going to hold me up? No, we just plop. Right? The same thing with this piano. I'm going to lean on this piano. I have faith in it. If it moves right now, I'd be really freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> but I have faith, confidence that this piano I'm leaning on is going to hold me up. That's the same hope, confidence that we're looking for, that God is looking for you to have in Him. To lean on Him. And not on your own understanding. This is where you lean on the Word of God. The understanding that comes from the Word of God. Well, Pastor, I, I don't know the Word of God. Let me help you. We're going to sit here for the next six hours. Just kidding. <laughs> but we have feeding times. do Bible studies. You could call me. Look around. There are a lot of Seasoned veterans here that would love to share the Word of God with you. Don't do it in your own understanding. I happen to know that there are some here that understand how to set up a race car. There are some here that know how to pull a driver out of a broken race car. Right? Because they break. But, when I started racing, oh, it's easy. Saw a guy in the pits, he put a 916 socket in the middle of a floor jack, 
right in the middle of the rear end pumpkin, jacked it up, measured the each side. This side come off the ground about three quarters of an inch before the right rear did. Perfect. I'm going, that's it? Yeah. Well, I didn't. But what he didn't tell me is the hours and hours spent that week doing everything <coughs> to make sure he would do that. So I did that part race. It doesn't do that. <laughs> Driver get, comes in and goes, this is messed up. I'm like, yeah. It didn't work. <laughs> because I was leaning on my own understanding. How are you setting up your race car? On the understanding of what somebody showed you or you observed from somebody else? Oh dear, don't do that. The best example we see is unfortunately those around us, right? Well, you can look around and look at some pillars and be just like them. But do you know the hours and hours that they've spent in the shop before that? Do you know the scars, the bruises? No. It's right here. It's in Jesus Christ, not us. Not us. So let's continue our, our word study of, these, of this scripture. The word understanding. <laughs> and I honestly, I laugh at myself more than I do anybody else. It's an easy target. But when I looked at the word understanding, I actually, it went, do I understand what the word understanding means? What do I understand? Didn't make sense for there for a second. I had a moment went, huh, what does the word understanding mean? So I looked it up. Watch this. Mental process of a person who comprehends comprehension, personal interpretation, intellectual fact, facilities, intellect, intellect, and mind. I didn't understand that. <laughs> I didn't understand the definition of the word. And then it came clear. I was never very good in high school. My understanding of what it was supposed to be like and those teachers was a bit different. I thought I'd rather be somewhere else. Right? Looking at the, staring at the mountains, knowing how many deer and fish and grouse, everything was out there. Didn't understand why I had to be there. They were teaching me nothing that had anything to do with fly tying. I didn't get it. Right? I didn't like them teachers, didn't like them books. So I leaned on my own understanding. And I've got the uh, bruises and scars to prove it. But then I started to understand. They were giving me the basis, the fundamentals to grow on. I couldn't sustain myself just out there and alongside of a mountain. Not sustainable. When you come to church and you hear just a message, it's fine. It's great. But to understand the message, it takes something actually supernatural. And that would be the Spirit of God. I sat right about, right behind Judy, summer of 1995. <clears throat> I like that. A few weeks later, I hear this from my heart. Well, not really that, but it was pretty clear God was talking to my heart. And then I understood, started to understand. Started to understand. And it took years for me to understand. And I don't completely understand the, everything in the Bible. If you say, you, if somebody tells you, oh, I understand the Bible completely, bring them to me. I have some questions. I'd love to talk to you about that. But to understand the Bible. Well, I'm going to blame the women's Bible study on Monday night for that because I get a phone call or a text Monday night. And those of you that were there understand this. I get a text. You're going to have to explain uh, chapter 1, verse 6 to us. And I love it when they do that. And the man will go, okay, we're in a roadblock here. They'll send me a text. We'll talk about it later. Then I run for my Bible to make sure I understand what we're talking about before she gets home. 
That was a, it was something about just the, the, the version they were, they were reading, small g versus a big g, you know. It was great. And then I started putting it into understanding. And it made perfect sense to the scriptures that I was already trying to formulate for a, a, a sermon this morning. So, we're going to talk about Monday night. Maybe not the way you guys were doing it. So in the first chapter of Jonah, we read that Jonah was instructed by God to go to Nineveh and preach the word. What did he say? No, no. no. I'm, you want me to go that way? I'm going this way. Okay? Worked out for him. You got to go fishing. Just kidding. <laughs> but he tries to escape on a boat. They get out there, <coughs> I'm totally paraphrasing this, please, please read it. Storm comes up. And in those days, something out of the way, <coughs> just crazy like that, perfectly calm seas, and all of a sudden this magey rat, just tempest starts blowing. It's got to be somebody's fault. What did you do? Right? <coughs> so they're throwing things overboard, they're trying to figure this out, they're like panicking. Well, Johnny, he goes down in the hole, falls asleep. The captain goes down there and says in verse 6, I believe. Yeah. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call your God. Little G. That was where the problem was the other night. Maybe, maybe he will take notice of us and we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and fell on Jonah. He won. <laughs> so they asked him, tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What did you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? So they don't know Jonah. They don't understand anything about Jonah. Yet, he, he answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, capital L, the God, capital G, of heaven, who made the sea and the land. This terrified them, and they asked, what have you done? <laughs> they knew he was running away from the Lord, because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down? Take me up and throw me in the sea, he replied, and it will become calm, because I know it's my fault that this great storm has come upon us. <coughs> so they get the answer. What do they do? <laughs> Next verse. Instead, perfect, just, just, what, just what we do, just what dudes do. Instead, the men did their best to roll back to land on their own understanding. But they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried to the Lord, capital L, Lord, <coughs> Oh Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. For you, O oh Lord, have done as you please. Then they took Jonah, threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, men, at this the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord, and made vows to him. Some of you may be sitting here going, Pastor, what are you talking about? How did this start off this way and now it's ending over here? Because that's a perfect interpretation of our life. We start off over here and we end up over here. We start off working on our own understanding. We start off going, this is the way I think it's going to be. My mom said, Jesus loves me to me when I was a baby. I got this. But you don't know anything else. Those men on that boat didn't know the capital G, God. They didn't know the Lord God Almighty. But they did at the end. They were leaning on their own understanding. They were leaning on what they knew. Their little G gods. None of that worked. They, they turned to the Lord God. The seas became calm. Now I'm not I'm not going to sit here and tell you you lean on God. 
capital G God, with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, and air all the Z's are going to be wrong at home. No, no. But you're going to understand why the C's are not wrong. I'm never going to preach to you a prosperity story. Like, you do this, you're going to get this. Other than salvation and glory, heaven. Everything in between, you know on the tombstone, that dash? That's, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a lot. Everybody's dash is different. But, what do you, what is your understanding of how this is going to go? What is your understanding at what happens at the end of that dash? Are you leaning on your own understanding? Me and God, we're tight. We're good. Really? Did you do any of the things he asked you to do? Wow, that, that's written by man. Okay. Yeah, they were in the printing press. Okay. Did you, what did you do with his son? Oh, well, I had a cross on it for 30 years. I know I'm just being goofy with this, right? But I've heard things like this. My grandmother was a Presbyterian. I'm good. <clears throat> I went to church for 50 years. Every time them church doors opened, I walked through. Yeah, but what did you do with the son? Well, I went to church every day. Luther? Did you know him? Did you have a relationship with him? And here's the, here's the other piece of it. Does he have a relationship with you? That two-way street. Many will knock. Not many will go in. They're going to say, Lord, Lord, we did all these things in your name. Scripture get a, get away from me. I don't know you. That's a scary part. That is the where the rubber meets the road. Does he know you? The answer is right here. Reading, interpreting, understanding, and doing. I say this a lot, and sometimes they go to teach you get mad at me when I say this. The New Testament is a verb. The whole thing. It's all action. It's not, there's nothing about, read it, sit on the shelf, that's the action. I'm going to sit on the shelf, and I got it. No. No. Everything in there says, now, do this. Great commission. There's nothing about anything short of, now, go, can, can you think of another word that's more of a verb than go? Do. Do. Right? To the world. Making disciples. And baptizing them. That's the verb. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then the greatest promise ever. And lo, I shall be with you till the very end of the age. He just doesn't tell us you do this, do that. I'm going to sit up here in the throne and just wait until you're done. I'll tell you if you did right. No. He's with us. He's in this room. He's in most hearts. It'd be in your heart. You have to ask him. You have to ask. You have to knock on that door. You have to earnestly, truthfully, confidently open that door. You have to ask. So, come on up. I would say come on up, music team, but uh, one of them is holding a sleeping baby. Which is just, I'm just jealous. <laughs> do you understand? Do, do you understand? What do you understand? Better yet, who do you understand? If you would like to know more about the who of understand, ask somebody. Pray. Ask God to send somebody into your life. Call me. 
as soon as I find the church cell phone. In other words, call a man. Blessings. Talk to me after church. Don't let the opportunity slip by. I'm 50 something years old. I've had a lot of friends pass away. I don't know if they, if they know the Lord. <coughs> don't be one of those friends that I wonder, hmm, they're gone. Do they know the Lord? It's not for me to understand. Only it's between them and God. Do you know the Lord? In all the things that you do, are you bringing him with you? And I could sit here and talk all day, but I'm not. Well, I will. Let's pray. Father, thank you. I ask that your spirit, this morning, right now, is kicking at somebody's heart. Somebody is asking. Somebody is, is you repeat their interest. Father, bless those down those doors. Thank you for letting us be here to help you with this. Thank you for letting us serve them by serving you. Father, wherever these seeds go, I know that you, <laughs> we do have that understanding that you will see them through, not us. Father, may this the rest of this day be glorifying to you. Once again, thank you for Pat. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.